Hey everybody, it's Flying Ryan here with the review of the JJRC H26D. Uh, now this has a 3 megapixel uh, wide angle camera here. And the lens, it, it is wide angle, but it's not super wide angle like a GoPro. So you don't get a ton of fish eye, uh, but you do get a wider field of view than with the standard cameras. And then this is 3 megapixel, whereas usually they're 2 megapixels, so it's a little bit higher resolution. Uh, so pretty nice camera. Uh, and they call this a 2-axis gimbal, but it's not actually a gimbal. Uh, it doesn't correct itself, but what it does do is from the transmitter, you can adjust it left and right and up and down. So that's pretty cool. You can adjust it every way. Um, however, there is no FPV with this one. Uh, there is the H26W, which has a Wi-Fi um, FPV camera, so you could see the angle. But with this standard one, you, you can adjust the camera, but you don't really know what you're doing with it. So unless you can actually see the camera line of sight, it's kind of weird to adjust the camera without an actual FPV view of what you're looking at. Um, but anyway, well move on to looking at the quad it's a pretty neat design here uh, kind of has these uh, like the the tarantula x6 these prop guards are kind of part of the frame and then they have these let's see if i can get a good angle on that uh, it has an led strip down the arm so every one of those little points there is a little led um, but they just flash a bunch of different colors. I mean, pink, purple, blue, red, green. I don't even know. They're just a bunch of different flashing colors. Uh, so they're not really that helpful for orientation. And in the daylight, you can't really see them at all. Uh, one of mine actually doesn't even work. The connection is bad or something. Uh, so kind of worthless LEDs on it, but they are there. And if you flew it at night or something, it may look like a, a kind of a neat light show. Um, let's see, let's move on to the transmitter, which is uh, kind of a, the same style that JJRC has had r uh, lately with like the, the brushless uh, X1, which I don't mind it. I mean, it's traditional hobby grade style, feels decent in my hands. Uh, these knobs up here are just dummies. They don't do anything. They're just spin and spin and spin. Um, you adjust the camera with these here. So that what would be your throttle trim and your yaw trim are actually your up and down and left and right camera adjustments. Um, and then you start the camera with these shoulder buttons here are actually two buttons. So you've got kind of a front and a back arrow. So if you press the front of it, you're doing one thing. If you press the back of it, you're doing another, which is a little bit awkward when you're flying, trying to make sure you press the right side of the button. Uh, but anyway, this left bumper here uh, picks your camera. I don't remember which one is which, but one's going to be picture and the other is video. Uh, on your right bumper here, I think I've got, I've listed them as one and two. So I would imagine, I guess, one is going to be the front one is your flip. So you hit that and then move the right stick and you'll do a flip. And then the back here is going to be your rates. And it's got three different rates, and the yaw rate does change. And it's a decent yaw. It's not super fast. Uh, you know, good, good yaw speed for a camera bird. And then, you know, it does, it, it flies a little bit sporty. It's not maybe um, as sporty as that Kaidang K, uh, K70 Sky Warrior. But, um, you know, for a camera quad, it's fairly sporty. Uh, let's see, what else is there to say? I think that, oh, recalibrate. Uh, so both sticks down left and both sticks down right to recalibrate the accelerometer. And then uh, I guess it must be headless mode as well, which I don't have in my notes. Yeah, I don't have any notes about headless mode, but I think it does, I think it does have headless mode. But yeah, CF mode and... Uh, one press return, which I don't know what buttons you would use for those unless it's like pressing and holding these or something. But yeah, I don't, I never even discovered that it had those modes because I didn't ever use them. These press, I wonder if pressing those does it. Anyway, there is, you know, headless mode and then the return to home where it just goes backwards with headless mode. But I don't, I don't recommend those modes at all. So, 
I don't even test them and barely even talk about them. Uh, but anyway, I've just that that's why there's two different recalibrations. So one's going to be your accelerometer and one's going to be headless mode. Probably down to the left is the accelerometer. Um, this is heavy, so it does require FAA registration. It is 435 grams, which is well over the weight limit. Um, it comes with two spare props, so not a full set, but when you've got these prop guards built in, it's going to be pretty unlikely that you break a prop anyway. Uh, there's a bunch of setup required, so you've got all these like labeled screw bags, because you know it comes in this little box, so all these... These uh, prop guards are uninstalled, the props are uninstalled, legs and everything. So there is quite a bit of setup I had to do to get this one ready. But you do get all the tools and screws and they're pretty well labeled so that you know where the screws go. This is our charger. So it's a USB charger through the balance plug. And it is a 2S LiPo, 1200 milliamp hours. Uh, that takes about three hours to charge, and you get about six-minute long flights with a 20-second LBC warning. Um, again, with the, the LEDs being hard to see, you can kind of miss out on that LBC warning. It's hard to see when the LEDs are warning you, uh, so you know, be sure to keep an eye out on that when you get close to the uh, six-minute flight mark. Um, it does not come with a micro SD card for the camera. That's where you would plug it in there in the back. Uh, so you have to provide your own micro SD card for that. Uh, let's see. I think that covered all the details. Let me check my notes here. Yeah, that's about all there is to say about it. So let's go take it for a flight. All right, this is the flight review of the JJRC H26. Pretty neat looking quad. You got these... Uh, prop guards with LEDs on. I don't know if that'll show up in the light on camera, but they kind of blink a bunch of different colors. Uh, one of mine does not work here, but the other three do, but they're kind of worthless. I mean, they just blink a bunch of colors, so not really helpful. Oh, and it does have this uh, kind of gimbal looking camera. It's not really a gimbal, uh, but it is adjustable from the transmitter. You can adjust it left and right or up and down, so that's pretty neat. You use the uh, the yaw and throttle trim buttons here to do all the camera movements. Now we'll start by just flying it. Let's see, there's low rates, medium rates, high rates. So the yaw does change. Not a super fast yaw, but pretty decent, pretty sporty. You can get some funnels going. There we go. You can get pretty sporty with this thing. Pretty good funnel. Feels a little bit twitchy. But pretty sporty actually. Doesn't feel too heavy. Feels a little bit underpowered maybe. But that may just be the responsiveness of the sticks. Not bad though. Do some flips. Pretty good flips. Alright, and now let's start the video. Yeah, it looks like it should be filming. Kind of get some height. It's a little bit awkward to work the uh, trim buttons while you're trying to manage the throttle. But I'll try to get some height here and then move the camera around to show you that. Um, Alright. I think that's rotating the camera down and back up. Down. Oh gosh, it's flying away on me. Back up. Man, it is hard to adjust the camera and keep your throttle management going. All right, now let's try to do that again, but with camera rotation. There, rotate right. Rotate back to the left. Oh my gosh, the wind's throwing me around. Come back.
can't really tell when the camera is centered from the transmitter. You have to actually be able to see it in order to know what angle it's at. Wow, the wind is really kicked up now. I think the camera is at its lowest angle now, so it doesn't point all the way down. Just to rotate left and right a little bit. Looks like it angles up quite a bit more than you would ever want to. That's got to be just looking directly at the props and motors and stuff. See what that looks like when I kind of do some fast flying. Probably makes it point forward when it's flying forward at full speed, but you're still gotta just be seeing a ton of props and stuff. Kind of weird. It's twitchy but fast. Whoa, come on, wind. All right, well, let's bring the camera back down. Man, the wind is just killing me right now. Let's go ahead and stop the video. Let's go back to doing some regular flying for a bit. Feels a little less twitchy. Uh, wasn't responsive enough there. Go back to high rates. Full throttle, full throttle. Wind was killing me. Little bush landing. It's all wrapped up the prop guards and stuff. No problem. Can't really see the LEDs in the light at all, and there's no audio LVC warning or anything, so LVC can sneak up on you in the daylight. I think I've showed all there is to show, so let's bring her in for landing. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That whole yaw spin was entirely on its own there. I did not do that. That was weird, the wind kind of kicked it and it started losing height and I slammed the throttle and it did a little spin all on its own. Not sure what that was all about. But anyway, there we go, that's the flight and the review of the JJRC H26. Uh, pretty neat, I, I don't know, it's a, it's a little bit twitchy but pretty sporty and feels maybe just slightly underpowered but not too bad really. And the adjustable camera is pretty neat, that's kind of cool feature. Anyway, check the video description for a price and purchase link. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.